Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make some of the trickier bits for the pig squish, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description, or you can simply search Moogly Pig Squish, and it should come right up. To make this pattern, we'll be using an eight millimeter crochet hook. This one happens to be by Susan Bates. And we'll also be using Bernat Baby Blanket and a little bit of Bernat Blanket Ogo. But you can choose any of the Bernat Blanket yarns to make this as long as they are the same size. You want the one that's rated a six, not a seven. In addition, we'll be using Safety Eyes. We've got two sizes here. 24 millimeter for the eyes you can see here and 14 millimeter seen here in our nostrils. And of course, we also need our usual crochet supplies, scissors and a yarn needle. For this project, I like to use these large finishing needles as they stretch a little bit more to accommodate the bigger yarns. Finally, of course, we need some stuffing. You can use regular loose polyfill or regular stuffing, or you can use a pillow ball like this. And I'll be showing a little bit more about that later in the video. The finished size of this pig squish is approximately 10 inches across, excluding the feet and ears and other little bits like that. First, let's take a quick look at the finished pig squish. This pattern has a lot in common with the bunny squish and the squishes before it. It's simply half double crochet worked in spirals down for the body. And then we work the same thing out for the belly, adding the feet until finally we whip stitch the belly to the body. If you look really closely, you can see that line right here, but it's in the same color, so it disappears pretty well. I did use a contrast color for the feet, the snout, and the inner portion of the ears. Again, you can pick whichever colors of Bernat Blanket you like to customize your own little squish here. The final thing you can't really see in the other pictures is this cute little curly Q tail. So in today's video, I will be going over the tail, the feet, the snout, and the ears, which are the unique pieces that I use to make this pig squish. First, let's make the pig squish tail. To make the tail, I used my main color or color A. Again, you can use whichever colors you like. We're going to use the long tails of our project to sew our little tail to our pig. So you want to make sure to come in and leave about a foot or so of yarn before you start crocheting. Then we're going to simply start with a chain of six. So I'll put my slip knot here on my hook. There we are. And then we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're simply going to make what is considered sort of a standard crochet corkscrew. We're going to skip the stitch closest to our hook and work three single crochets in each remaining chain till we get to the end. This will cause that twisty look that we want for our corkscrew pig's tail. So we'll skip that one right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and work into the bottom of the stitch or the underneath hump, but you can work into whichever part you like. And I'm simply going to put three single crochets in each one of these chains. So there's three single crochets in the first chain. Then I'll find the next chain and do the same thing. One, two, and three. And you can see it's already starting to want to curl up a little bit. Then we simply find our next chain and do the same thing and we continue this down across. So since we started with a chain of six and we skipped the first one, that would be a total of 15 single crochets here all worked back into that chain that we made. So I'm almost at the end here. You can see it is corkscrewing beautifully. We've got just one more chain. Let me pull up a little bit more yarn here. There we go. We've got our last chain right there. So we just work three single crochets right into that one. One, two, three, and with that, we've got our tail made. You can see here, you can give it a little encouragement if you need to, but it really does want to just corkscrew right on up into this cute little tail. That is all the crocheting there is for the tail, so we want to go ahead and grab our scissors. And then again, we want to leave a little bit of a longer tail right here than we might normally. What we need to do then is simply finish it off. And then when it's time to add our tail to our pig, We've got two long ends here already built in that we can use to tie it onto our body to check placement and then weave in those ends to make it nice and secure. Next, let's work on the snout. 
To make the snout, I used color B, which was just a darker pink. Again, you can use any color that you like to customize your own pig squish. We're going to start, and again, I want to leave a little bit of a long tail here just so I can help use it to anchor down my piece when I go to assemble. And then I'll get my slip knot on my hook. And we're going to start again with a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now what we're going to do is skip the chain closest to the hook and half double crochet in each of the last five chains. So it started the same as our tail, but it's definitely going different right away. We skip that one closest to the hook and we half double crochet in each remaining chain. One, two, three, four, and five. If I can get right into that very last chain next to our slip knot. There we are. So for row one of our snout, we simply have five half double crochets. The next bit for our snout though is going to be around where we work all the way around. So first things first, we turn and chain one, and then we half double crochet in those five stitches we just made. Let me get that little fuzzy out of the way there. Alrighty, so right back in that first stitch. One, two, three, four, and five. So simply half double crochet in each of the stitches from the previous row. Then what we're going to do is we're going to work four half double crochets in the skipped chain. That skipped chain was of course our turning chain that la very last chain we made when we chained six and skipped the first one so we could half double crochet in the remainder. That skipped chain or turning chain is where we want to put the next four half double crochets. So essentially right into the side of row one. So let's go right on in there. One, two, three, and four. And as you can see, that has pushed us around now to where we're looking at the bottom of row one. So now we're going to work a half double crochet in the bottom of each of those five stitches. So we can go right in the bottom there. One, two, three, four, and five. And of course that one, you need to pull up a little bit more yarn here for my skein, but that one should bring you right up to our slip knot again there. So there's our fifth one. We'll go right in the bottom of that stitch next to the slip knot. There we are. So to finish off round two, now we want to work four half double crochets into the side, the other side here of row one, just to finish off that curve so it goes all the way around. So we'll sort our yarn out here, find that end of row one, and just go right in there with four more half double crochets. So there's two, three, and four. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and break our yarn before we join. And we want to leave a long tail here because we're going to use this tail to do the majority of our sewing right around our snout. So to determine how much yarn to cut, I like to just go around the project that I'm going to be sewing on about two and a half times or so. That's usually more than enough yarn to sew in with. And cut my yarn. And now I'm simply going to carefully pull this tail end all the way on through. There we are. And then I'm going to grab that finishing needle and put our end right on there. You can see how this is a lot easier with these big thick yarns. And then I'm simply going to seamless join. So I'm going to find the top of that very first stitch we made here when we started working all the way in round, in round two go under those top two loops with my needle and just gently pull that through and go right back down into that final stitch that I came out of. And this will just create a really nice smooth oval. If I can get that tucked in there, there we go. There we are to make a really beautiful 
oval-shaped snout. And then when I go to sew it onto my body of my pig, I can just use this long tail to sew all the way around the outside. And I can use this little one to help anchor it down as well. However, before you go to sew it onto your pig, you'll want to go, a- you'll want to go ahead and add those safety eyes for the nostrils. If you don't want to use safety eyes, you can use buttons or you could use um, you know, embroidery with an- another color of yarn, whatever you want to do. I like to use safety eyes right here. I've got a couple of 14 millimeter safety eyes. And basically I just kind of stick them kind of on the opposite ends here of row one. You can eyeball it and sort of move them in and out however you like to do them. But once you've had them in place, simply push the back on down and those will be nice and secure when it's time to sew it onto the body. Now it's time to make our ears. We'll need two ears and each ear is made of two pieces. The first piece in our color A. Again, I'm going to leave a long tail. Whenever I make amigurumi, it's really handy to leave those long tails for sewing our pieces on and just help anchoring them down while you figure out whether or not they're in the right spot. So I've got a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then I skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in the chain after that. Half double crochet in the next chain. And then simply double crochet in the five remaining chains. One, two, three, four, and five. Should be our last chain here right next to the slip knot. Always a little harder to pull that little loop up. There we go. Alrighty. So that is row one for piece one of our ears. And now we're ready for row two of piece one of our ears. We're going to turn and start with a chainless starting double crochet. Pull the loop up to the height of a double crochet, secure it with my forefinger here on the hook, Yarn over with a loop, go into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through that loop and behind the yarn over, yarn over again and pull through the last two loops to finish. Then we double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Half double crochet in the stitch after that and single crochet in the next stitch, and then slip stitch in the last stitch. Then we're ready for row three. For row three, we turn. We're going to slip stitch right back in that first stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. So we've got our slip stitch and our single crochet. Next, we're going to half double crochet in the next stitch and double crochet in the last four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Then we break along, break our yarn, leaving a long tail again for sewing and set this piece aside while we make piece number two. For piece number two of our ears, we're using our darker color. And again, I want to leave a long tail for sewing here. Then I'll go ahead and put the slip knot on my hook. And then we're going to begin with a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in the chain after that. Half double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three, and then double crochet in the very last stitch. Should be the one right next to the slip knot here. There we go. And that is row one for piece two of the ears. To make row two, we turn and we begin again with a chainless starting double crochet in the first stitch. So we pull that up to the size of our double crochet, secure it, yarn over, insert in the first stitch, yarn over, 
pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Then we half double crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and two. Single crochet in the next stitch and simply slip stitch in the last stitch. Then we're going to break our yarn again, leaving another long tail for sewing. So the final step for our ears is to assemble each ear. Again, you'll want two of these, each of these pieces so that you can make two ears total for your pig. Unless of course you've got special designs for your pig. I'm going to take piece one and piece two and lay piece two right inside piece one. You can see it really does kind of want to curve up like this. You just want to follow that natural curve and place this piece right inside. You can see it's just a little bit smaller. This right here was our final end where I went ahead and cut my yarn. And now I can just use that tail end to sew piece one into piece two. Now what I'm going to be doing here is I want to try and really slide my needle under just one of the loops on this side of the outer portion of the ear, piece number one, because we don't want the darker color to show through the back of the ear if at all possible. So we just wanna pick up sort of one little strand there if we can and just work our way right around the ear. Of course, we can sew right through this one because the color matches, so we don't need to worry about that at all. But get, our, get all our little tails out of the way here. There we go. And then we can just very carefully go right around the ear, picking up a few stitches. There we are. Then when it's time to come back and attach it, you just wanna pick up, as I say, sort of one little loop so you can get it sewn right on there. You work your way all the way around until piece one is secured inside piece two. Then you can weave in both those ends for piece one and you'll just have piece, or excuse me, for piece two, weave in the darker ends, leave the lighter colored ends or piece one ends for sewing onto the body itself. So now is a good time to go ahead and sew on the snout, the ears and the tail and add the eyes before you make and add the belly. It's a lot easier just to sew those things on when you have access to the inside of the body. So you'll take your body shape and you'll want to sew on the ears using those long tails of piece one. You can see piece two was all sewn in here. So I had those long tails to really anchor it down with and figure out my placement. So I sewed on the ears using those long tails to opposite sides, sort of around rounds five through seven here, if you count down from the top. Again, you can adjust those for your own personal taste. Then directly between those, I came down the front and added our snout right here. Now, again, we'll want to add the nostrils before you sew the snout on, and you can use that long tail to sew it right on, right around rounds 14 through 16 of the body. Again, you can adjust that here for your personal taste. After you've got the snout secured, it's a lot easier to add those eyes. And I like to just sort of, you can see come out sort of a stitch or so from the side here to add those eyes. These are 24 millimeter safety eyes. And then finally, you wanna go over here to the opposite side. Again, use those ears to help you center and add your little tail right there. I simply sewed in those tail ends and secured it on down right around round 17 of the body. The last unique piece we need to make here is the feet. There's also the belly, but it's just like the first few rounds of the body. So to make our four feet, I'm going to use our darker color. And this time I'm actually going to start not with a slip knot, which my fingers wanted to make, but rather with a magic circle. So I'm going to take my tail end of my yarn and go over my non-hook forefinger twice, like so. Insert my hook under both of those loops, grab the one in back, pull it just under that edge, yarn over and pull a loop through. This helps hold the magic circle really nicely and secure together. Then we're going to chain one and then work a single crochet into the ring. And then six half double crochets into that ring. I'm gonna go ahead and take my finger out with this bulky yarn, it is nice and secure. As I make that single crochet and these six half double crochets, I want to make sure that I go into the ring and also work over that tail. That will allow me to pull the center here very nice and tight. So there's one, two, go ahead and straighten that out a little bit. It seems to wanna to curl up, I'm never sure why. Three, four, five, and six. 
So that should be a total of seven stitches in round one. And we're going to be working in a spiral here, so we're not going to join, but we do want to go ahead and close up that center so it's nice and tight. This is why it's important to work over that tail, because now we want to just gently pull on that tail and it will pull that center nice and closed. Do just a little bit at a time. This yarn does have a little bit of a grip here, you can see from the chenille. So we don't wanna to pull too hard and break our yarn. We just wanna give it a gentle pull until it's nice and closed. Now we're ready for round two of our first foot here. And this is a good point to bring in a stitch marker if you have them available, since we are working in a spiral. So I'm going to go ahead and begin round two. We're going to be putting two half double crochets in each stitch around. So we find the top of that first single crochet we made. We'll go right in there for our first half double crochet for round two. And that's where I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker, just so I know this is the stitch that starts round two. When you're working in a spiral, it can be really easy to lose those. So now we need to put a second half double crochet into that same stitch. There we are. And then we're just going to continue to do that all the way around, two half double crochets in each stitch. So since we started with seven stitches in round one, by the end of round two, we'll have a total of 14 stitches. So at the end of round two, you might notice that it's starting to cup up sort of towards you in this direction. At this point, we just wanna flip it the other way here so that our right side is facing out for our feet. And then we're ready to begin round three. We've got that next first stitch marked right there with our stitch marker. So for round three, we're going to start with a half double crochet in the first stitch. So we'll go ahead and move our stitch marker up as soon as we get that stitch finished to mark our new first stitch for round three. There we go. Then we single crochet in the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then we will half double crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and two. Then single crochet in the next five stitches again. One, two, three, four, five. And there should be just one stitch left here before our stitch marker. And that's where we put our last half double crochet. Then I recommend that you go ahead and weave in that very first end right now. To secure a magic circle, it's always a good idea to go back and forth a couple different directions within that circle in your um, yarn needle, but you don't have to worry about trimming this end off. You can just leave it stuffed right inside our foot because then we're ready for row four. So we've been working in spiral rounds, but row four is going to be worked flat. We're going to squish the top of our foot closed, enclosing that little end right there so it can be just a little bit of stuffing to make our foot just a little bit puffier. To do this, we are going to go through the first stitch and the last stitch from the inside. We just wanna squeeze those closed to create a seam right across the top of our foot. So I'm going to put my hook right in that first marked stitch. Then I'm gonna carefully make sure my yarn's out of the way here turn around and go through the last stitch that I made as well. Wanna make sure that our yarn ends up on the outside there so we can yarn over, pull through both of those stitches and simply single crochet. There we are. Now we can go ahead and get that stitch marker on out of our way. And we're going to continue to work through our paired stitches across. So we find the next stitch on this side, go right through that same stitch on the opposite side and make another single crochet. And we're going to do that all the way across. If you'll recall, we had a total of 14 stitches. So at the end of this little row four here, we should have a total of seven, seven pairs to work through. So I'm most of the way across. You can see that tail end added just a little extra puff there to our little foot. When you get to the last pair, sometimes it can be seem a little strange because they're really kind of only separated by that one stitch there, but Go right through the top of those last two stitches and then you've made your foot. Go ahead and cut your end and finish off and make three more. So here you see our four feet. They've been added to the belly. Before we do the last round of the belly, we simply 
crochet that last round through the top of our feet and the row below so that those are nice and secured. However, before we sew that belly onto our body, we need to stuff the body itself. So you can use loose fiber fill like you see right here and stuff it into that cavity before you sew the belly on or what I did for this one was I used a pillow ball. You can see the one I used right here. Now, these used to be available in 10 inch sizes and if you can find a 10 inch pillow ball, I highly recommend it. It's just the right size for this project. However, for this project, I was only able to find the 12 inch one. I don't know if you can see here on our table, but it's quite a bit bigger than our finished stuffed animal here. So there are a couple things you can do to prepare this ball to make it easier to use for our stuffed animals. First and foremost, of course, go ahead and remove any tags, including this one. You're the consumer. You can go ahead and take that one off. Then I really want to point out what I love about these balls is that they have this zipper right here. So you can just open that up and take out the excess stuffing, but you've still got a great ball shape and liner right here. So that's actually where I got all this extra stuffing from. All this was pulled out of the ball that I used for the first pig squish. However, don't throw it away. I'm holding on to this for another project down the road. So it's not a waste. We're going to hold on to this fiber fill for later. However, this gives us a great opportunity to go ahead and remove as much fiber fill as needed to make this ball be the right size for our squish. And like I say, I really like having this fabric lining in here. Then once you've got it installed in the body, you can pull out all the stuff you need to make it fit really well. And if you've got excess fabric, which you probably will, you can simply fold that over and sort of hold it in place before you sew that belly on to finish off your squish. And that's how to crochet the pig squish. Again, you'll find that as a free pattern on mooglyblog.com. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.